War II was a two-ocean fight. In the Pacific were landings against defended Japanese islands, and in the Atlantic, a large-scale landing in Europe. And none of those operations would have been possible without the Higgins boat. And Eisenhower, once he was president, later looked back and said, Andrew Higgins is the man who won the war for us. Andrew Higgins came to New Orleans with a mandolin and a couple dollars in his pocket, in addition to that individual charismatic attitude. Various companies were looking to get into the inland marshes and swamps that lead out to the Gulf. But the water was too shallow. Vessels couldn't get in and out of the waterways. So Higgins listed in a naval architecture class, and he figured out how to make shallow draft boats that ran offshore. He kept innovating and innovating, creating these nice, affordable, durable, stable work boats. And that's how he started his business. And it exploded and went from building his first boats in 23 to establishing Higgins Industries in 30. At the very beginning of the Second World War, Higgins had one plant in downtown New Orleans that had a showroom out front and then a workshop in the back. But he could read a newspaper, and Higgins knew, like a lot of businessmen, that war seemed to be in the offing. Higgins started building new plants with his own dime, knowing that that need was going to arrive. And he knew he really had the best product that could run in shallow water and beach itself. He was inventive and creative. He did some amazing demonstrations for the military to show what he thought he could do. And then all of a sudden, the contract arrived in the US Navy. They said, well, we need boats. And he's like, all right, well, I'm already started. So let's get going. If the Japanese had not attacked Pearl Harbor, Higgins would have remained a successful boat builder in New Orleans, and that would have been it. The war provided a challenge for him. He took that Ford concept of vehicles moving down assembly line, and he applied that to shipbuilding. Higgins introduced the idea of equal work for equal pay. And he had women, and he had African Americans, and he went and recruited country folk to come off the farm. And in response to that fairness, he developed a tremendous workforce that produced an epic amount of vessels. Within three years, he's got multiple plants, and he's putting 700 boats out a month. He took a contract to build a patrol torpedo boat for the US Navy. PT boat is very dashing because they're sneaking up in warships many, many times their size is well within gun range to attempt to sink them. Higgins got a hold of that design and he said, I can build a better boat. So he, with his own money, built his own boat and sent it to do the trials. From there, the Navy started investing more and more heavily and ended up deploying these boats to the English Channel, the Mediterranean, the Southern Pacific, the Aleutian Islands. But Andrew Jackson Higgins is most known for the landing craft. The ship to shore landing is a thing that complicates a lot of military maneuvers. How do I get troops from the ship to the shore? Hitler expressed his own frustration at trying to solve those things with invading England. And Higgins came up with an idea for a landing craft. He put a ramp on the front of the vessel. The vessel beaches itself. The ramp comes down, and troops and equipment can roll off the ramp directly onto the beach. By breaking through that concept, all of these invasions become possible. North Africa and Sicily and Guadalcanal, even Iwo Jima. That's how boots got on the ground for the Normandy invasion. By the end of the war, he had produced the vast majority of US naval ships. Higgins, as the entrepreneur of spirit, is a wonderful and express example of how capitalism was deployed through the arsenal of democracy in America winning World War II.